win the game, I guarantee. Is this fun or what? This is why you left all that way. Get the popcorn ready. Here we go. Okay, hey, give me time. We'll hit the touchdown here, okay? I'm very passionate about the game of football. I love everything about it. I love practicing. I love working at it. I love Sundays. Peyton Manning, you rock! When I'm out there playing football, I want every play to be just perfect. Peyton Manning, just a machine. And when you win, it's the greatest feeling in the world. There's nothing like it. You're going, right? But when you lose, it's the pits. I never liked the guys that said, well, we'll, you know, we'll get them next year. It's, it's supposed to bother you. So you need to be intense and passionate about it. Well, you can spell Peyton Manning MVP today. I'm telling you, he is white hot. Right here, eight. Get the record right here, eight. Snap is to Peyton. Protection stays in. He throws the stuff like that. Yeah. Who's your favorite football player, then? My dad. Your dad's your favorite football player, too? Boy, you're on the right track. You're going to be a football player when you grow up? Mm hmm I was lucky growing up. I had my, my hero and my favorite football player right there in my house. He always just included us in everything. He used to take us out to practice on Saturday mornings, and uh, we'd go into the locker room after games and hang around all these famous NFL football players. It was a unique way to grow up. I think a lot of former athletes really want their kids to do the same things that they've done. But to my mom and dad, that really didn't matter. Uh, I think they wanted us just to work hard and to study hard and to be successful at something, whatever that may be. They always just encouraged us to play sports and just to enjoy, but it was never a pressure situation. I think that's still today why I have such a, a love for the game, why I have so much fun playing football, because of the way he handled the whole situation. Just making it a fun process. <laughs> Can't do it. Hot, hot. Not yet, not yet. All right, go get him, Pete. Starting when I was three years old, I always had a game in the backyard. I'm not talking about touches, I'm talking about full pads, official uniform. We had lockers in our rooms. We had the national anthem beforehand where we'd sing. And you know, I'm three, my brother Cooper's five, so you sing about half of it, then you forget the words, and you start just kind of mumbling, and uh, then you know, start the game off. Yeah. My dad used to film. He had great home videos on camera. You know, they used to say, Peyton, do your five-step drop. I was a, kind of a fat, pudgy kid, and so here I am kind of waddling back doing this drop. But uh, even then, I had pretty natural footwork, I guess. I could always pick up a ball and throw it pretty naturally, which I think is why I've had some success at quarterback. But I've always played quarterback, never played any other position. Never played defense, never played special teams. People ask me what position I would play besides quarterback, I just say coach. That's about all I could do. First year, I played organized football was in the seventh grade. The Newman Greenies, I remember it was a heavy right, roll pass right, and that was our number one play. You know, it's just sprint out to the right and throw a deep corner out. I ran the option a pretty good bit. I could fake the pitch and turn it up and get down the field uh, back in the day. I used to study a lot of film with my dad. His big thing, he had two things. He used to scramble a lot, and he'd sprint right, and then he'd kind of reverse back left. I mean, he'd be 40 yards behind the line of scrimmage. So I, I did that a few times. I sprinted right, and nobody was open, and I could have run forward, but it was more fun to kind of run back and uh, scramble around. And the other thing I did is one time I saw my dad, it was a handoff play. He was supposed to give the ball to the running back, but he just kept it himself. So I did that one time. The running play came in, and I just decided I was going to keep it and be like old dad. The coach yells at me, you know, Peyton, run the play. We're not out here making up stuff, but it was more fun the way I did it. Now we're going to beat them. They ain't beating us, all right? We're going to win the dang game. Let's go. That was really the best time I've ever had playing football. I was a sophomore, my brother Cook was a senior, and he was my wide receiver. I completed about 110 passes that year, and I threw 80 to my brother Cooper. 
But the other receivers obviously weren't too happy with me or with Cooper. And we had our own signals, our own plays, our own code words and things, and uh, it was really a lot of fun. He was a great receiver, but uh, he was injured in his freshman year at Ole Miss, and so he had to give up football. So I changed my jersey number and wore the number he wore, which was 18. So I still why I wear 18 today because I still feel like I'm, I'm playing my football for my brother who, who doesn't have a chance to play anymore. time. I think about when my dad retired in 84. I'm sure that she thought football was over. It was uh, just a little delay there before it really started cranking up. With the uh, first pick of the draft, the Indianapolis Colts select quarterback, University of Tennessee, Peyton Manning. I think one thing my dad he did tell me that helped me out is that you work real hard in college to get to be a high draft choice. But once you get to the NFL, you have to work even harder. If you want to be average at best, but you want to be a really good football player, you have to do even more. Red 12! Red 12! Hut! Hut! No! That ain't right, is it? Damn, choke it a little bit. Yeah, I think you can overanalyze this game a little bit. I think I called X dig a Y snap. It should have been yeah. H dig. Mm -hmm. Exactly. It still comes to a point where you're playing football just like you did on the playgrounds or in high school or in college. It's still the game of football that you know how to play. If you overanalyze it, then you can get yourself in trouble. Did that just happen? It just happened. That is beyond belief. It is absolutely beyond belief. The one thing I always appreciate about Coach Mora is that he always backed me up. In my rookie year, he told me kind of before the season, hey, I know you don't want to struggle, but you are going to struggle. And in a lot of ways, he kind of told me, we're not a very good team. I had some games where I didn't play quite as well, and he easily could have pulled me out of a game. And what he told me was, when you have a bad game, when you throw two or three interceptions, it's easy to come out. It's hard to stay in the game and avoid throwing number four. Back to throw Manny. Look, shoots it long and deep and intercepted. But it was kind of a gut check time just to just keep believing that, hey, something good is going to happen. I don't think you want to have to go through something like that, but if you do, instead of feeling sorry for yourself, you better use it to try to make you a better player. I kind of learned a lot in some of the second halves of those games, even when the game was out of reach. That is the 23rd touchdown pass. Peyton owns all the rookie records now. And we fought through that year, and like it's only won three games, but at least we competed. You kind of find out about some other guys, hey, this guy's gonna battle for me. This guy will hang with me. I can count on this guy. Manning looks to throw, pump fake, pumps again, fires to the goal line. Pollard's got it! Pollard! Touchdown! Yes! The Colts win! The Colts win! They're gonna win! A comeback in the second half! Our opening game, we played Buffalo, who had beaten us soundly the year before twice. Fakes to Edger, drops the throw, fires one over the middle, caught, touchdown! And we opened up with Buffalo at home, beat them 35-14. I went right then, it was, hey, let's do this again next week. This is kind of fun, beating the team pretty badly. So early on in that season, we knew right away we had a chance to be pretty good. Going from 3-13 and 13, my rookie year to 13-3 and three the following year, still the biggest turnaround in NFL history. Manny keeps rolls to the right side. He's going to run. He's at the 10. He's at the 5. Touchdown, Peyton Manning! We won 11 in a row that year. That's a lot of Mondays when you're high-fiving, everybody's in a good mood, the plane rides are great. 
got everybody believing in themselves, hey, let's don't be the, the same old Colts that you hear about. Let's be a team that can win in big ball games, and we did that, so that was really a special year. just like you know playing little league baseball you know your best friends are your are your teammates and you play together and you win that's one thing my dad he said it's always got to be fun i mean you have to work hard you have to put a lot of time into it but you can't ever get where you're not enjoying yourself i lost my chin strap if you're not enjoying yourself, you're probably not doing the right things. Hey, I said it would be here. Where is it? I knew it was coming. I'd rather you lose anything than but my chin strap. And it, we'll get you on it. We'll get you taken care of. You know how long it takes to mold oh, and fit geez. a chin strap? At least a, at least a month. At least a play. Y'all fix this yourselves. Y'all, it's good stuff. The other guys, it's usually doesn't have the flavor to it. I've done a good job today. How much y'all charge? Not for free. Yeah. Let's go let's have some fun tonight. Win on three. One, two, three, win. I've always just had a true love and passion for the game, which I think is uh, why I love this game so much, because I enjoy going to work every day and, and really just I live for Sundays. Touchdown! Woo! 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 I'm alive! Hey, baby! I think quarterback is the, is the toughest position in sports. Come on back, Pop, come on back. And the reason I say that is because quarterbacks gotta know everybody's position. Easy, easy. Hey, you might the 24 out there. Come on, You might the 24 out there. And everybody's assignment. If I point to you, that means I'm coming your way. There's a lot of times the receiver's gonna go, hey, pay, what do I have? Thanks. And you wanna say, why didn't you study your playbook? But you know what, you just, you gotta give them the route. You gotta tell them what to do. And you got the weather. Basketball, there's no weather. There's no wet ball. There's no wind. There's no snow. There's noise. Your teammates can't hear you. You sure as heck can't hear them. Stand by him so when I don't hear, somebody tells him, all right? Get back here. Sit down. Black 30, watch him out there. You got time. There's a rush. You don't have all time to call the play, get up there and. River, 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 river. Red! And you got 300 pounders coming at you, trying to tip your ball or trying to hit you. Watch the blitzes, right? Watch the blitzes, BA. And then you got the defensive coordinator over there who's just trying to get into your head by blitzing you. You have something called pressure. The pressure that you have to complete this pass, otherwise you lose the game. I'm talking about blitz our ass again. So I think those things add up to make it uh, quarterback and uh, the toughest job in sports. Explode to gun, double right, flip, zebra, scat left, wide drag, X hook, F trail, alert, 52, sprint draw, easy on two, on two, ready, break. <laughs> Richmond, Richmond, 96 mirror. 18, Sally, Sally, Buffalo, red, 30, set. It's part of our cadence. A lot of that is getting the players the play. They're waiting to hear your cadence to see what the play is going to be. Red, 30, hut, hut, hut. And then another thing is trying to draw the lineman, defensive lineman offside. Offside defense, you want the penalty? Is that better? Yeah. Yeah, we'll take that. And whether you draw them off sides or not, at least if they're flinching, if they're edgy, that means they're not going to be quite as aggressive. I mean, sure you love the five-yard penalty, but if you get them, maybe they jump a little bit and then they're, then you snap it right as they're going backwards. That's when you got them in a good position. Fires up field, touchdown, Marvin Harrison, and the Colts have that 20 to nothing lead. Hey, we're going to use the cadence now, right? We got to use the cadence versus that blitz. Black. The snap count is something you have to use to your advantage. These defensive linemen in this league are so quick and so fast, and the good ones, the great ones, they can anticipate snap counts. And so the more you change it up and keep them off balance, the better chance you have of uh, not getting killed. Picks up the blitz, throws underneath, caught by Reggie Wayne. He breaks a tackle, 25-30, first down. Keep it going, boys. It's a good drive. Keep it going. I'm going to do a dummy 18, but if I, I might audible. If I audible, I'll use, I'll use Brown, right? Red! 
Easy, easy, brown, right, pistol. We do so many audibles. Kind of our whole thinking is, let's try to get to the best play right then. I mean, I think the worst thing you could say is, boy, I wish we would have had this play called versus this defense. Apple, apple, inside. 54, 54, 54, 54. The defense is blitzing or they're playing a certain coverage where you have a chance maybe to hit a deep pass or to hit a touchdown. Let's go ahead and take advantage of it. Hey, watch this block by the kid here. There is a time and a place also to simply call the play and go with it. I see you, big daddy! I see you, big daddy! <laughs> I guess I like to consider myself kind of a natural thrower. You want to keep the ball up. You want to try to make your release as quick as possible. Try to follow through and finish. Finish. Finish the throw. Come on. And we have a high school football camp, and you see all kinds of different passing motions and throwing motions. Oh, that's a good one there. That's a good feet. That's good feet. Smooth. Smooth. Two hands. Two hands. Two hands. That was real good. Y'all see those two? Hey, they have two hands on the ball the whole time. I mean, hey, it looks cool sometimes, and that looks real cool and all that. I mean, at one time, that guy slaps your hand, you fumble, and you cost your team the game. It's not cool at all. Why do you want to retreat and throw so you don't get, don't get the, you know what, knocked out of you, right? That's good feet. That's a good one there. After a five-step <laughs> drop, when you get to the end of your drop, you like to avoid any kind of wasted motion. That's a good throw. Only thing, hey, you don't, try not to pat it before you throw it. You, know? you see a lot of guys, that a guy comes open and they, they pat it one time. One, two, three, you know, you pat it. It might make you a little bit late. Yes, sir. You know what I mean? All right. They get a hitch in their motion. It's, no, it just, it doesn't come out. And uh, so I've always been real conscious of that. Because that's kind of your baby. This is how I throw. I think I throw it pretty well. Sets, looks, fires to the end zone, open. I try to throw a spiral every time because it's easier for the receiver to catch. Although I've thrown lots and lots of touchdowns that have been wildly balls where I've been on the money, accurate, couldn't have put it in a better spot. And never heard any complaints from the receivers, especially if it's a touchdown. If it's a touchdown, they're fine with it. I take a lot of pride in my profession, in the position, and feel like I have good presence out there. I feel like I have a pretty good idea of what's going on at all times. I try to be the ultimate field general. Well, you can spell Peyton Manning MVP today. I'm telling you, he is white hot. Manning will fake to Edger. James drops, looks down the middle, throws it to Stokes. He's got it, 45, 50. Touchdown, 87 yards. What play. And who's the MVP? You better believe it. Peyton Manning. MVP, MVP, MVP. MVP. I guess I consider myself to be somewhat of a throwback player. I really enjoy uh, learning about the history of the game, about the former players. Here's Marina off, wide open field, throws for a touchdown to Andrew When I joined the NFL, Dan Marino's 48 touchdowns, 1984 was one of the things that jumped out and said, I said, that'll never be broken again. And I threw 28, 29, I threw 33 one time, and I felt like I had a lot. The nice thing uh, about that is it turned into a team thing for us. I mean, it's a quarterback's record, but our receivers were excited about it. I think they were running routes even harder, you know, trying to get open, catching the ball, and trying to dive into the end zone. Reggie, did he catch it? Touchdown, Reggie White! Our defensive players were, hey, we'll get the ball right back for you so you can go out there and try to throw another touchdown. So it really turned into a team thing. 
blitz is on by the Bears as Manning goes to throw, leaps it deep to the end zone over the shoulder, touchdown Indianapolis. Terrific catch and a terrific throw. Peyton Manning, just a machine. It was kind of a classic shootout. It was a back and forth kind of game. And I remember in the first quarter, I leaned over and said, we're gonna have to score every time we get the ball. Is to Peyton. Protection stays in. He throws to Stokely. That's the record breaker. He broke it to Stokely. I can't think of another throw where I had as good of anticipation as I had on that particular throw in the seven years I've been playing. I threw the ball a good two seconds before Stokely had even thought about breaking for the route. And all of a sudden he turns and the ball is literally right there, right on the money. That's the work in the month of April and, and May when nobody's around. You work on the timing of those plays, and it pays off for you in December. Number 49, and Dan Marino can take a step back. Peyton Manning can lose it. The record they thought would never be broken has been broken. It's nice to say that you did something that, that nobody else has ever done. Be able to throw 49 uh, in a season is something that I appreciate because of the respect that I have for the players that played before me. I got to talk to Dan. You know, boy, I'm getting all emotional talking to him. I can't believe it. Dan, you know, besides my father, was always my favorite player growing up after my dad retired. And to break his record sure means a lot. And I just really, just really appreciate it on my teammates. It's been a fun ride, but it's still about the team. We gotta do a believe on three now, that's right. One, two, three! <laughs>